fiery horse to the speed of light, a cloud of dust and the hearty high of silver, the Lone Ranger. early days of the western United States, the masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order. The local sheriffs and even United States marshals came to depend on his courage and resourcefulness. But there were times when he seemed to oppose them. Justice meant more to the Lone Ranger than the letter of the law, and the man who deserved a second chance could always depend on his help. Return with us now to those thrilling days when the West was young. From out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! We're heading north for Elk City! Hello, Silver! Away! Henry Warren, dignified and middle aged, stepped inside the swinging doors of the Last Chance Cafe. So named because it stood at the far end of Elk City's main street. His gaze picked out one of the young men standing at the bar. And as he made his way through the crowd, he called to him. Dick! Oh, howdy, Mr. Warren. Glad to see you. Join us, will you? Have a drink? No, thanks. Met my brother, have you? Uh, Red, I want you to meet... Uh... Red and I haven't met before, Dick. Oh. Evening. Good evening. Dick, I'd like to speak to you a moment. Sure, go ahead. Alone, I mean. Oh. Well, that's all right, I guess. You don't mind, do you, Red? <laughs> sure not. Come on, Mr. Warren. Be back in a minute, fellas. All right, kid. This ought to do. What do you want? Certainly two of me I'd find you here. Yeah? I give you, don't take your engagement to my daughter very seriously. Huh? I don't get it. Certainly you don't think she enjoys knowing you spend your time in places like these, do you? Say, what is this? She sent you after me? She tried to prevent my coming. Well, then why... I came here on my own responsibility. I know Sally's already spoken to you, but I know young men don't like to feel they're being made to sacrifice their independence. I thought perhaps a word from me might do more good. What's wrong? Well, frankly, I'm afraid I can't wait much longer to appoint a division superintendent. The line needs one, and I haven't the time to spare for the job. I have work of my own. I've been neglecting. You mean you're thinking of giving the job to somebody else? If I have two years. All right, fair enough. I told you when I quit my other job, it was because I didn't believe in working for a fellow who was going to be my father-in-law, didn't I? I thought I'd convince you your engagement to my daughter had nothing to do with it. I offered you the position because I thought you were the best man for it, and for no other reason. Well, then what are you in such a hurry for me to make up my mind for? I'm not as sure as I was that you are the man I want. Huh? You've changed these last few weeks. What do you mean? I mean, since Red came back from Texas, you're not the man I thought I knew. You, well, you seem to have lost your sense of balance. Oh, I have, eh? You seem to be doing your best to turn yourself into an imitation of your brother. Now, just a minute. What's wrong with my brother? Nothing, so far as I know. But what's good for one man isn't necessarily good for another. Red's the kind who'll never put down roots. 
He'll always be on the go. He belongs in the saddle. I imagine he'd be a fine partner in a fight. He's what south of the border they'd call a real caballero. But he hasn't it in him to go as far as you could go. I don't like that, Mr. Warren. I thought you wouldn't. This town never turned out a man fit to clean his boots. Oh, I'd be the happiest feller alive if I thought I'd ever be half the man Red is right now. And I'd say you're acting the fool. Good enough. Go ahead and think it. No, I suppose you're going to say I should stay away from Sally. No, I won't say that. No? Sally's a sensible girl. I can trust her to manage her own life. I've never believed in that kind of interference. Well, I can manage mine, too. I'm beginning to doubt it. But there's no use in my discussing this any further. I'll say just one thing. Well? Yeah. On the first of the month, I'm appointing a new superintendent. If you haven't come to your senses by then, it'll be too late. I won't give the position to another man. Then take it away from him again without cause. I wouldn't ask you to. Then we understand each other. I'll say good night and leave you to your friends and your whiskey. Good night. You'll find me at my office if you think better of this. I reckon you needn't waste time looking for me. <laughs> Preaching at me. I think it was just a kid or something. <laughs> What's the matter, fella? You look mad enough to chew nails. Oh, it ain't nothing. No? Forget it. Hi, right, barkeep. Another round for the boys. It's on me. <laughs> proved to be eventful for Dick and his brother Red. It was close to morning when they reined up before Dick's cottage, and they chuckled as they recalled what had happened at the cafe. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> we sure wrecked that place, didn't we, huh? <laughs> Never laughed so hard in my life as I did when I seen you pick up that Monty dealer and chuck him clean through the window. <laughs> <laughs> didn't notice you missing any of the fun. Wasn't it you picked up the chair and busted the mirror? You notice that? Yeah. <laughs> And I come near to getting my ears pinned down on account of it. Stopped a watch and a barkeep jumped me from behind. What happened? Yeah, I sent him after that tin horn gambler. <laughs> you go ahead in, kid. I'll fix the horses. Well, shucks, I'll help. No, go on in. Get some raw beef in that eye of yours before it gets to looking like a sunrise. <laughs> well, go ahead. A little work will do me good. Well, if you don't mind, uh... I'll have some coffee ready for you. Sure, that'll be fine. Don't be too long. No. Come on, you critters. <laughs> I'll get them saddles off you and then we'll... One moment. What the? Well, this isn't a holdup. Mask. Just keep your hands from those guns. Who in places are you? It doesn't matter. What's the idea? You and I are having a talk. Say. Well? Mister, didn't I see you once in Texas? Maybe you did. I think I but did. But that doesn't matter either. I have some things to say and you're going to listen. uneasy at his brother's delay, was just about to go outside and investigate, and the door opened then. Well, gosh, I was beginning to wonder if maybe you hadn't got lost. What have you been doing? Oh, kid, you've been keeping things from me. Huh? I've been outside talking. That's what delayed me. I learned some things I wish I'd known before. Gosh, Red, what's the matter? Why didn't you tell me you had a chance for a swell job with Warren Stage Line? Huh? Say, who told you that? Never mind who told me, just answer up. Well, gee, it's nothing to you, is it? No. Sit down. No, Red, Sit wait. down. Oh. What's got into you, anyhow? Plenty. But, Red... I hate like sin to have it said I got a brother without the sense of a nester's off ox. That's a fine thing to say. Yeah, well, you ain't heard the half of it. Kid, why in the name of Tunkett, when you got a chance like that, do you go and throw it away? Maybe I wanted to. Oh, I wanted to, huh? Mighty sudden change, ain't it? A month ago, from what I heard, you'd have jumped at the chance. That ain't so. Well, you would have. You hadn't had some funny notion about working for your girl's pa. Well, that's something else. What's ailing you? You want to be a saddle bum like me? You're no bum. <laughs> I ain't, huh? Well, maybe I'm something worse. We won't talk about that. But one like me and a family's plenty. You sound like Warren did tonight. That your girl's pa? Yeah. Uh-huh. Then for once, me and a fellow with brains thinks the same. All oh, right, you wait a minute. Yeah? You don't go lecturing me, do you? What? What call you got to ball me kid, out? Kid, I want you to make something yourself. Well, quit calling me qu kid. <laughs> Bother you, does it? Shucks, I'm sorry. Can't seem to get out of the habit. But just the same, Dick, I meant that. 
There ain't nothing in the world would please me more someday when I'm sitting around the campfire with the boys come nightfall than, than to be able to make my brags. I'd like to tell them maybe I'm not so much. But I got a brother back home that's a humdinger. Yep, I sure admire to do that. Funny you waited till now to preach. Never knew till now folks think you could amount to something. The way you've been acting since I come home, I reckon you was just as no count as me. You mean you can have fun, but I can't, huh? Fun? What in thunder are you talking oh, about? You know. You wish but... if I could start in again where you are now? You think for one second I'd be what you're looking at? Well, you. Oh, were... shut up. You think it's fine to tote a couple of low hung guns and be faster than most on the draw? Kid, did you know I've killed three men? Well, I have. Sure, it was an affair fight and all. But that don't save me from being branded as a killer. I'm where I've got to be slick with my irons. The only thing between me and Boot Hill, I live by my 45s. And I'll tell you now, I hate the sight of them and I hate everything they stand for. I don't believe it. No? I've seen you in fights you love me. You'd rather fight than eat. And I savvy what's wrong with you, too. Let's hear it. You're just jealous, that's what. You figure you're the man of the family and I'm the kid. You want it to stay that way. You like to think you can always come home and tell what you've been doing and make me look up to you. It burns you plenty to think maybe I can grow up, too. I'm jealous, huh? You are. You needn't deny it, neither. Look at you. You're so mad you're shaking. That proves it. <laughs> I never thought you'd hit me, Red. Kid, I... I never thought the time would come when you needed it. I didn't really mean what I just said. Thanks. I'm glad to hear it. Let's forget it happened, huh? Sure. Now, how about it? You gonna call on Mr. Warren tomorrow and tell him you want that job if he's still holding it open? Well? I, I can't. No? Why not? I told you I'm sorry about calling you jealous, but... Doggone it, you gotta quit telling me what to do. If I want to live your way, ain't that my business? Did I ever tell you you ought to go pen yourself up in an office? Why can't I decide that for myself? Let's sit with it. Of all the fool idiots I ever seen, you take the cake. Wait, Red. When you get sense, I'll be back. Not a minute before. Hey, you saddled my horse. Because I was afraid this would happen. You had it figured? I know how Dick feels. And I've done my best. With words. Huh? Now's the time to whack. Get in the saddle. Yeah. Yeah. Where are we going? To my camp. Come on, Silver. Get up, Bronx. Get up. I'll Silver! Away! Red followed the Lone Ranger to his camp. There, the masked man talked to him for a long time. And finally, Red, you're at the bottom of the trouble. Except for the three years he drove a stage, Dick has known scarcely anything but office work. He has ability and he's shown it. Perhaps that's his difficulty. He's going ahead too fast. He's still too young to realize the value of the things he's achieved. Well, how does that make me to blame did you ever know a young fellow in his position who didn't envy those he thinks are living lives of adventure? <laughs> adventure. I've had my stomach full of it. Your mask. You and the engine look like you've been around plenty. What's your opinion of this kind of life? Any man who's found his work and is doing it is lucky. No matter what that work is. Yeah. Dick's throwing his over. You could change that. Eh? Depends, of course, on how much you think of your brother. How far you'd go to open his eyes. Stranger, if I wasn't a kid's brother, I'd... I'd just naturally have to be his pa. <laughs> That's how much I'm for him. You know a way to help him. Tell it. Makes sense, I'll back you. I don't mean penny ante. I'll go the limit. Good. Just one thing, stranger. Yes? What are Dick's troubles to you? What makes you bother with him? I just found out about them. They didn't bring us here. No? Remember saying you thought you'd seen me in Texas? Uh-huh, and I still think I did. There's no question of it. I trailed you here. What? I came to take you back. Hey. For that robbery at Hondo. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. The Lone Ranger explained to Red what he must do, then... I'll have to trust you, Red. I'm banking on my belief that your desire to help your brother is more important to you than your wish to escape the law. I won't fail you, mister. Well, guess I better be getting back. Yes. Come here, Brock. I'll soon be going ahead. In about ten days. Not before then? There are things to be seen to. We'll need all of ten days. Well, you're the boss. You'll know where to find me when you want me, I reckon. I will. Well, adios. So long, engine. Uh, adios. Get up there, Brock. Get up. Tell quick call, Scout. Here, Scout. What matter? I didn't want to explain to Red just why ten days are needed. Uh -huh. But you're riding the Hondo. You're getting the United States Marshal there. And you're bringing him here as fast as you can. Ten days passed. And then one night, Tonto and the Marshal rode into the masked man's camp. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold there. Me... Me bring him. Good work, Tonto. <clears throat> Found Red, did you? Well, where is he? I'll make the rest and get started back. Not so fast, Marshal. But I ain't. First, we've got something to settle. What do you mean? Did Tonto tell you the situation here? Oh, I guess so. Why? That comes first. You can make your arrest later. Here, Silver. Now, hold on there. You found that hombre when I couldn't. That's fine. I owe you something for it. But that don't give you the right to interfere with the law. It doesn't? You know, <laughs> doggone well it don't. Very well. Then I'll have to take the right. Do you think you can find Red before I'm ready? Try it. Come on, Silver. Hurry, hey, hey, fellow, uh, hurry. Uh, you not stop him. Tonto, where's he going? <laughs> him go see fella now. Red? Uh. Blast him. <laughs> well, shucks. What's the use of getting mad? He'll have his own way anyhow. <laughs> Nine times out of ten, his way is the right one. Everything's set? Right. Did you say you had a mask I could use? Here, take it. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, that all right? It's fine. Where's Dick? He was going to the cafe for a bit, then dropping around to call on Sally Warren. Reckon he should be getting there most any time. Then on your way. Uh-huh. And good luck. Thanks. Get up there, Brown. Get up there. Back to camp, old fellow. <laughs> Come on, Silver. Come on. <laughs> As Red had told the masked man, Dick had called on Sally that evening. They'd talked for less than an hour when he began to get uneasy. Gosh, Sally, I, I'd like to stay longer, but doggone, I think I'd better be running along. Why, Dick? Well, it's getting late. And... <laughs> it isn't even that yet. Oh, I know, but when you got to get up early in the morning... You and... don't. You're not working. Well, just the same. And I don't. I can sleep till noon if I wish. Now, Dick, why don't you admit you're afraid Father will be coming home and you don't want to face him? That ain't so. Then why the sudden hurry? Well, I... Oh, you've got a guilty conscience. Huh? You know what Father told you the other night was true and it's bothering you. he tell you what he said? Of course. Why shouldn't he? It was supposed to be just between us. Oh, I, I'm sure Father didn't understand it that way. Then don't you think I had a right to be interested? After all, I'm the girl you promised to marry, you know. Oh. Or oh, is that another thing you've changed your mind about? You've changed your mind so many times lately, it's hard to keep up. You're just laughing at me. Am I? I'm not sure. Huh? Sometimes I think I do want to laugh. For a grown man, you can act like such a child. But there are other times when I'd like to... Like to what? <laughs> oh, nothing. <laughs> now, what are you laughing at? I was just thinking, if you hope to dodge Father, you'll have to jump through the window. Huh? He's coming now. That's him at the door. Oh. Good evening, Dave. Uh, hello. Glad to see you. I don't find you around often anymore. Well, well, I... I that is... I didn't expect you tonight, not after what's happened. But, gosh, Mr. Warren, I, I haven't said for sure that I ain't going to take that job. Job? And... Oh, that... Well, that isn't what I meant. You mean to say you haven't heard about your brother? Huh? What is it, Father? If Dick hasn't heard of it yet, Sally, perhaps you'd better leave us alone. But I... Better stay. Mr. Warren, what's happened? Yeah, Sally would soon hear of it anyhow. Dick, I don't want you to get angry or start shouting at me. Remember, I'm telling you just what I, I was told myself. You ain't told me anything yet. If, if Red's been hurt... As far as I know, he's in good health. Well, then... But he may not be once he's caught. Caught? What for? What are you trying to say? The law's after him. Huh? 
The widow Banks reported all her savings stolen about half an hour ago. She says she was held up at the point of a gun. She accuses your brother. That's an out-and-out -out lie. Now, please, Dick. I ask you not to get angry. I told you I'm repeating just what I heard. But you can't tell me Dick. that... Re oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to yell, but... Do you folks believe a crazy story like that? Well, naturally, we'd rather not, but... But what? Mrs. Banks seemed quite certain. What'd she say? Well, I understand she described him very accurately. Of course, he was masked. And she couldn't see his face? I suppose not. Then where does she think she gets off, accusing Red of a rotten stunt like that? What else she have to go on? Did she say Wait that... Wait a minute, Dick. Wait a minute. Well? Don't cross-examine me. I got all this at second hand. If you want the details, why don't you see the sheriff? He's still at the office. So is Mrs. Banks. You bet I'll see him. I'll find out about... Wait, Dick. Huh? We'll go with you. Don't you think we should, Father? Perhaps. Well, if you're coming, come ahead. Come on, Father. I ain't wasting time waiting for nobody. <laughs> At the office of the sheriff, Sally and her father looked on sympathetically as Dick tried to convince the widow Banks that she had made a mistake. Ma'am, it, it couldn't have been Red, you seen. It just couldn't. Why, my brother's as square a feller as you'll find anywhere. If you just knew him like I Young do, man, I... Young man, are you telling me I'm blind? Oh, no, ma'am, but... Your brother's got red hair, ain't he? Yes, ma'am, but... Then it... it was him. Ain't nobody else around here his size with red hair. I knew him the second I laid eyes on him, even if he was master. I knew maybe, him. Maybe it was a stranger. No stranger would have known right where that cash was hid. But Red ain't been in town long himself. Long enough to find that out, it's plain to see. Oh, but doggone it, ma'am. Can't you say that... Sheriff, I won't be talked to like this. My lands can't a body be robbed without having the head snapped off afterwards. But I was... Dick, on... just let it go. There'll be time enough for this afterwards. I've got plenty of men out hunting for Red. He can't dodge him for long. If he's innocent, he won't even try to dodge him. Then when he's here, we'll get the truth of this. I don't care what you say. Red ain't guilty. We hope that as much as you do, Dick. We're not against him. Of course we're not, Dick. You seem to think we, we want to believe he's guilty. Oh, I didn't mean it that way. Then let's just wait for a while and see what happens. If you want to wait here, Dick, there's a chair. If you'd rather go uptown, I can send for you when Red's brought in. Inside with you. It's Red. Who's the mess man? Here's your man, Sheriff. Take him. Red, hold still. Blast you. You were warned there was no use putting up a struggle. Red, what happened? Who's this fella? Terry got the drop me the other side of town. Said I was wanted for something, this skunk. If I could just Red, get my... wait. They all say you held up the Witter Banks. It ain't true, is it? Of course I it just... ain't true. I'd just like to get my hands on the skunk that started that story. Yeah, you see, folks? Red ain't guilty, didn't I tell you? Wait, I'll have to have more than his word on that, Dick. Oh, Red wouldn't lie to me. Well, we'll find out. You say you never done it, Red? Whatever it is, you bet I didn't. Well, here's Mrs. Banks. Ma'am, is he the one? Look at him good. That's the man. Say, look Shut here. Up. He ain't even changed his duds. There's the patch I seen on his shirt. And that's the very same hat he was wearing. I recollect the bullet hole. You don't know such thing. I... Hey, what do you think you're doing? Searching you. We'll just have a look at what's in this here pocket. Hey, get on with Go on. ahead, Sheriff. I'll hold him. Cash by gravy. It's mine. It's mine, I tell you. Wait a second. Yeah, what's this? It's his watch. The watch he bought just before he died. It was with the money. All right, Red. Now what have you got to say? I... Yeah, what is there to say? Admitting you're guilty? Yeah, what's the use? Sure, I'm guilty. Go ahead, throw me in jail. Hey, what are all your folks looking at me like that for? You, you lied to me. Huh? What'd you expect? Think I'd admit it? You, you lied to me. You're guilty. You stole from a woman. Now, wait, kid. Wait, Red, I... I don't savvy... What'd you do it for? Oh, I don't know. Didn't you have no reason? None at all? I need the cash. Cash? I thought you had plenty. Well, we, we've been drinking and gambling. Cash goes fast that way. Well, you know how it is. And if you see a way to get more with... Well, you take it, that's all. I, I thought you was the finest brother a feller ever had. Oh, kid, listen. I thought you was just about right. Red, there wasn't a thing you ever done that I didn't think was just all right. I... I'd have gone the limit for you. And, and that turns out you're a crook. Now who's preaching? What'd you think I was after knocking around like I've been? You're so doggone law-abiding. Let's see what you'll do after you've lived the way I have for a while. Yeah, we'll just wait and see. Red, 
There ain't cash enough in the world to make me want to be like you. I... I'm just ashamed we're even related. Mr. Warren. Yes, Nick? That job's still open? It is. To me? It is. Then I'm taking it. Sally, come on. Let's get out of here. I can't stand the sight of that pole cat. <sighs> Red, I don't know how you done it. If anybody had said them things to me, I'd have had to bust loose and tell the truth. I'd have just had to. Sheriff, maybe you'll find you can stand for more than you think. When it's for somebody means as much to me as that kid does. I just felt terrible accusing you when it wasn't so. Red understands. He knew it had to be that way. Red. Yeah? You did fine. I want you to know you won't lose by it. And one moment. Come in there, Marshal. I heard the whole thing. Marshal Cleary. Howdy, Red. Figure I was still in Hondo. Well, I... What do you think of him, Marshal? Well, I'll tell you. After that scrape at Hondo, I was ready to shoot him on sight. But uh, after what I heard and seen just now, well, Red, I'd be mighty proud to shake your hand. Huh? If you're willing, that is. My gosh, sure. But that sounds funny, coming from a fellow that's here to arrest me. That hold up in Texas? Of course. Well, the mayor's man tells me you read to give back what you got in it. Well, sure, but I'm still... So if you just stay away from here till your kid brother settles down to where it's safe for him to know the truth, I'll, I'll tell you a secret. Eh? Huh? What do you mean? I came here to arrest a fella, but <laughs> it's all gone in it. It's clean slipped my mind who he is or what he's done. <laughs> so I... I guess I'll just have to go back without him. just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.